Fred Smith, thank you for joining me on Channel Vision today. Very nice to see you. Thank you. Fred, now you're, you're a singer-songwriter and you've led quite an exciting career to date. But first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the industry? Well, like most singer-songwriters, I went to university um, and studied law and economics <laughs> and um, graduated in that and um, went through a pretty competitive process to join the foreign affairs departments as a, as a graduate recruit. Uh, and life was going well and then I started writing songs. Um, prior to that I played sort of covers in bars around Canberra. Um, but for whatever reason I started writing songs in about 1996 and ever since I've Focus on that really, and uh, and kept a part-time caper going on with foreign affairs. You, you started in Canberra. The, the last ten years, you spent a lot of time travelling with your music, mm. um, including doing some piece work in the South Pacific region, I believe. Tell us about some of those experiences. Through foreign affairs, you know, uh, the Australian government and the armed forces find itself increasingly involved in work to help stabilise countries uh, traumatised by conflict. Um, uh, and one of those was Bougainville uh, in 1998, 97-98, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Vanuatu started up a peace monitoring mission in Bougainville Island to help them come back from um, a conflict which had lasted eight, eight years or so. Uh, and it was mainly the Australian Defence Forces there, but whenever they go to a place, we tend to go too. And so I went over there as what they called a, a peace monitor and worked there for uh, about seven months in 99, and then again in 2003. Um, and I got a taste for this kind of work. Uh, and since I've also worked in Solomons and uh, more recently in Afghanistan. I mean, most of these um, stabilisation problems in the end only have political solutions. And so you need people who, uh, who have that kind of background to, to help facilitate those processes. So obviously the work that you undertake with DFAT has quite a significant effect on the creative endeavours that you undertake with your music. Does that work both ways? Does DFAT recognise? DFAT doesn't send me there to make music or play music, yeah. um, but they tolerate me when I do. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, no, but you know, you, you're in the business of relationship building, um, and um, uh, and and music is a great icebreaker on that front. Um, more so in the Pacific culture than in Afghanistan, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, you know, I find myself really playing a role in documenting artistically yeah. what what Australians are doing in these contexts. Uh, I don't set out to glorify it or anything like that, I'm just telling stories f from my own direct experiences. And, um, and so I think, uh, you know, it, it's a, a useful function. <laughs> you also spend a considerable amount of time in the United States. Um, I believe you even lived there for up to three years or something like that. Can well, that's right. See, my, my wife um, works as an arts official for the art gallery. That's why you get this nice painting behind me. <laughs> um, and she got a job in the cultural section of the uh, Australian Embassy in Washington, D.C. And um, so I took leave and went and lived with her there and um, took the opportunity to work as a touring musician for three years in the States. And um, yeah, it was my first experience of being a full-time musician. And it, you know, it was initially very tough. I mean, you're a businessman, really. Um, you're, you're a door-to-door -door salesman. You, mm. uh, you spend a lot of time out on the road um, trying to build, build, build a brand, really, and things mm. like that. And, um, um, and uh, I mean, the first couple of years were pretty hard. By the last year, I I'd, I'd, you know, got to the point where I was playing around a lot and getting a lot of work, but in the end, um, I've decided that I kind of need to have both lives, you know. You, hmm. I, I just need the intellectual engagement with the world that the workforce provides. Okay, so you've, you've had significant history in solo performing and so forth, but you've also worked in collaboration with a lot of artists, but in particular Liz French. And... For you know from your 
excursions If the truth has many versions Then what is a lie? Can you tell us a little bit about that relationship, working relationship? Yeah, well, uh, in the late 90s, for reasons I don't really understand, I started writing songs from a woman's point of view, like woman's voice. I was just hearing a woman's voice. Um, and, uh, and I got a critical mass of these together and um, went to the arts ACT, the ACT government, and applied for a grant to record an album of women's songs. And they gave me five grand or something. And then I spent the next two years trying to find the right girl. And um, I was playing in a crummy bar in Sydney on a Tuesday night and there were six people there, one of whom was a friend of Liz French. And so she said, why don't you contact this person? And I did. And, uh, and, the first, uh, and we got together and started recording this album. The first three months of the whole thing were really difficult. We didn't understand each other. And then suddenly the penny dropped. We just understood where we were coming from. And ever since, it's been a really strong uh, working relationship. I mean, apart from her ability as a singer, she's a great double bass player. Um, and a guitar and double bass together is about all you need for a band, really, mm. in a small room. It's a great sound. Um, so, it, you know, working with Liz provides a great palette of expression. You know, I really feel like when we play together, that we really cover a lot of bases emotionally. Um, but she's also got a, got, got a very professional streak about performing and, um, and a real courage and honesty in her vocal performance and, and she serves the song. Um, so for all those reasons, uh, she's really easy to work with. Soldiers, sing me your supper's lullaby. You give it your whole, no need you should fall. I understand the process of um, uh, telling a tale, a story, a, a storyteller that you are. What about things like politics when it works its way into your music? Is there much of that? I think I was probably more political back in the late 90s than I am now, uh, although people who listen to the Uruzgan album might describe it as political, but I, I'm a big believer in um, setting out the facts in a story and letting people come to their own conclusions about the politics of it all. Uh, I think we live in a, uh, a profoundly sceptical era, uh, for better and for worse, and so I don't think people enjoy being told what to think. And uh, uh, so I go to great lengths not to tell people what to think. Your solo career is quite significant and everything. What, what for the future for Fred Smith? What are we looking at? For the future for me, well, I've just done two very big albums. You know, I did the Urban Sea Shanties record with the Spooky Men, and that's big backing vocals on some of my more, um, my more uh, cerebral drinking songs. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, of course, the Eurozgan album was, you know, it was thematically quite big. Mm. Um, and production-wise, band and all that sort of stuff. I didn't spare the horses. Um, but... Um, a lot of my songwriting starts from simple guitar finger picking, you know, Mississippi John Hurt, that sort of kind of style was a real influence for me. And, um, uh, and so I think after doing those big albums, the only way to go is small. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, a kind of quieter, less produced, more personal album Excellent. at some point. At some point. At the same time, uh, there's still a lot of interest in the Uruzgan record, so I'm going to take that out to regional theatres because I've developed a show that really works in a theatre okay. around that. And there's a great deal of curiosity in the Australian public about what the hell's going on over there. Yeah. What the hell is going on over there? It's complicated, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's life. Yeah, no, it's, it's a complicated place. You know, it's, it's a tribally fractured place with a very deep history of conflict. Uh, people and a society traumatised by 30, 35 years of... Um, uh, very bitter civil war and um, uh, over the last 10 years we've tried to help them out of that and um, we've come a certain way to that you know we've built <coughs> a pretty significant Afghan army uh, a democratic system of government which is far from perfect but better than the Taliban um, and it's just reached a point where I don't think we can add much more values and besides which the Americans run out of money mm. so we're leaving um, we won't leave entirely 
Uh, there'll be forces on the ground there um, from the West for many years to come. Uh, this will prevent the Taliban from taking over again. Uh, the next few years will be complicated and messy. And uh, beyond that, it's up to the Afghans to see what they can do to pull through. Fred, it's been lovely talking to you. Where can people find out more information on Fred Smith if they want to have a look at what you've done, have a look at what albums they can get and so forth? I'm on www.fredsmith.com.au. You've got to put the AU at the end because some guy in America took the fredsmith.com. He runs a concrete theme park in Minnesota. <laughs> well, if I'm after concrete in Minnesota, I know where to go. fredsmith.com. Sounds good. Thanks, Fred.